Five years back, I wouldn't be sitting straight like I am because I will have a thick wallet in my pocket. Clearly, I don't have that wallet anymore. I have got a thin wallet in my front pocket. That means that the currencies, the money movement has changed completely for us. And it is poised to change again. So let's explore in the next few minutes how the money movement is going to change in future. And what are those factors that will really determine what this will look like? I know it's crystal gazing, but it, let's have some fun doing it. So let's start with what are the factors that impact consumer convenience? Because I think consumer is king and without consumer getting what they need, everything else is kind of lipstick on the pig. So if we start with uh, cash, how do we use cash? We first go to the ATM, withdraw some cash, go inside the supermarket, try to pay for the goods using the cash. Then the supermarket would, would either go to the nearest bank branch or a post office or something and deposit the cash. The bank branch or the post office will then lorry the cash across the country to some cash center where the cash will be recycled and then put back in the economy. Clearly a very expensive process. We can do better than that and that's what is explaining the new payment instruments that have come up significantly over the period of time. If we look at other payment instruments like card, credit card payments are a lot better, right? You just walk into the supermarket, you um, pay the, for the goods you've bought, the merchant gets instant notification that the money is authorized, most likely, unless there's a fraudulent transaction or there's no money in my bank account or the credit limit, and, um, and, and, and I can walk away from, with the goods. Clearly, there's a lot of process which happens in the background, the three-party or the four-party model, where the merchant gets paid, the settlement between the issuer, the acquirer, the various financial institutions which still takes a lot of time behind the scenes. If we come to the account to account payments, real-time payments is clearly picking up, but only for domestic. You look at international remittances and the transaction may be going through three or four correspondent banks before it reaches the destination. Could charge a arm and a leg, could be taking several days in some cases clearly a lot of inefficiency in the system. So where are we going, both from a consumer perspective, from a merchant perspective, from a financial institution perspective, we, we can see that real time is the name of the game. In not so many years to come, most of these transactions will have to be real time to be competitive and to satisfy the immediacy need of the consumer and the various enterprises around us. And that's where you would see a slick account to account payment journey is definitely the way forward. Also the new instruments like central bank digital currency or other stable coins and others which are coming up hold a lot of promise to achieve the real timeliness of the end to end journey for money movement. If we look at some of the other factors, let's look at the payments initiation itself. We spoke about the cash and the checks being um, clearly challenged from an initiation perspective. There's lots to, lots to carry. Um, card as a physical instrument also we are seeing is, um, is being replaced by uh, mobile phones. But is that the future? Um, biometrics definitely has a role to play in future. But also some of the transactions being initiated by machines themselves is, is coming up. So there are about, what, eight, nine billion human beings on the planet. And it is predicted that in the next four to five years, about 40, 50 billion machines, whether they are cars or fridges or uh, other uh, machines, will be um, enabled to make transactions themselves. 
clearly that will take a few years to have to change and any infrastructural change takes takes many years but we know that our wallet will not be the same when it comes to initiation whether it is through a phone wallet through um, a machine uh, initiated payment the payments um, the transaction initiation is going to change significantly so let's then look at some of the other factors um, and one of the big factors is cost of transaction we know that um, the uh, large cost associated with the physical instruments themselves but even with the digital instruments look at the card transactions themselves the interchange fees is quite high in a number of jurisdictions where they are not regulated and also when you compare it to some of the new instruments which are coming up like buy now pay later the cost is even higher than um, the credit card instruments for a merchant and then um, some of the other instruments which are more free like account to account or close to free account to account transactions they are not as developed with respect to some of the refunds and the reimbursement process in many jurisdictions so i think there is jury is out as to what is going to be um, the winning um, proposition here but one thing is for sure the core transaction cost itself is going to go go down and down over the coming years and where the value is going to be added because the uh, the competition or the battleground is going to be on the value add around the transaction itself how easy you make it how you integrate it in the experience itself and how you add the uh, value using um, the various other instruments like wallets around it is going to be quite crucial in times to come and the cost of transaction going down finally uh, I don't think this will be a complete conversation without talking about the macroeconomic conditions that we are seeing right now just post covid days where inflation is on um, a high we've got really rising interest rates and uh, in a macroeconomic condition where a lot of people are going to be going um, to be pushed towards the edge of their financials and and what that causes is that their payment choices are going to be different will they want more control of course will they want to be um, more open to taking credit that is going to change will they be more wary of counterparty risk again these are all considerations which will come in and then some of the instruments which we were talking about um, are also going to undergo change when it comes to control like standing instructions or direct debits or like ongoing monthly full payment is going to be a challenge where they want the flexibility to be able to pay in parts or pay later you look at instruments like buy now pay later I mean, while they are brilliant for giving point of sale credit, um, there are challenges from a regulatory perspective that they need to evolve, and and clearly the delinquencies associated with those products is going to be tested as we go through these tough times in the economy. So all in all, um, whatever happens with these instruments, it will be the customer that will. start to gain more control and any instrument like request to pay like um, uh, the wallets and others which which offer flexibility of transactions are going to be more uh, forefront of of the wallet or or become the new wallet so i if i just recap clearly we are going to a world where things are going to be more real time things are going to be a lot more embedded and automated we will have much lower cost of transaction though the overall value add around the transaction is going to be significant and finally the customer is going to be in control so the question goes back to what is going to be your wallet in times to come